her two will wet very well. I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of draw out the diagram of exactly how things went and, and explain everything to you. Her total tubal length on her left hand side was seven centimeters and the flow rate was excellent on that side. Uh, that's the left side. The right side, she actually had the same tubal length, seven centimeters. Most of the time the tubes are a little bit different. But she also had excellent dye flow through that right tube as well. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just draw a diagram, kind of explain the anatomy a little bit for you. Okay. This is just a picture of a, of a pretend vagina. In the back of the vagina is a cervix. The cervix goes through the vaginal wall and enters the abdominal cavity and becomes the uterus. And then there's a cervical canal that goes into the uterine cavity, also called the endometrial cavity. And then from the endometrial cavity, there are tubes fallopian tubes that come off and then there's an ovary that's attached to the uterus as well. So the way that reproduction works is that during intercourse sperm is deposited in the vagina. Sperm will go all different directions. A lot of it just comes out. Some will go in the back. But some of the sperm will make it into the cervix. The cervical canal is a relatively hostile environment so a lot of the sperm doesn't make it through but some of the sperm makes it through. When it, the Gosh, sperm that makes yeah. it through the cervical canal gets into the endometrial cavity, some of it will get into the tube. And as that sperm goes down the tube, if there's an egg available, it will fertilize the egg in most cases. The egg is released after a follicle is developed in the ovary through ovulation. The egg is released and it kind of floats around the belly until it's picked up by the fimbria. Once it's picked up by the fimbria, it enters the tube and it will start making its way down as well. So if the sperm is coming this way, the egg's coming this way, and they end up meeting up, then if the sperm is good and, and everything works out, you'll get fertilization. If fertilization occurs, this becomes an embryo. That embryo travels down the tube, and that embryo will just implant somewhere in the uterine wall, and it starts to grow, and it ends up growing into a little baby that's attached to the side of the uterus. So when patients get their tubes tied, they want to prevent that from happening. They don't want to get pregnant anymore. There's a number of different ways that people tie tubes, but the goal ultimately with whatever technique is used is to separate the tubes so that there's a layer of scar tissue here and a layer of scar tissue here so that when that egg gets into the tube, it can't get past that scar tissue. When the sperm gets into the tube, it can't get past the scar tissue. The egg just simply disintegrates the sperm does the same thing, and so these can never meet, and you never get a pregnancy. So this is a very effective method of preventing pregnancies. When I, have, when I do a tubal reversal, I go in and I cut out the scar tissue, and I take, I take the tube back a little bit just to where I can get really good uh, fresh tissue here so that I know that when I put the tubes back together, we're going to have good tissue lined up with good tissue. Once I've taken the tubes apart like this, I have a catheter that I've inserted before the surgery and it has a little opening in it and I, and I fill the catheter up with dye and it fills the whole uterus up. And once the uterus is filled with dye, the dye will go out the tube. At that point, I can determine the flow. And we always hope for excellent flow, of course. Moderate flow is when I have to push a little bit harder to get the dye to come through. Minimal flow is when I really have to push pretty hard to get the dye to come flow through at all and then no flow sometimes occurs if there's tubal disease, fibroids, patient has a history of endometriosis, or there's scarring inside this actual uterine portion of the tube. And most of the time we usually get excellent flow. Sometimes we get moderate flow. Rarely we get minimal flow, and, and almost never we're in a situation with no flow. This is more likely in a, in a situation if the patient has an eschewer reversal or an implant reversal. So once I did her, once I opened up this what we call the proximal tube, or the tube next to the uterus, and, inject, and injected dye, she had excellent flow. Once I've opened up this side, I also inject dye into this side to make sure the dye is coming out of the tube. And once I see that this, this what we call the distal portion, is open as well, then I'm ready to put the tubes back together. The first thing I do is I bring this tube closer to the uterus so that it will line up with this tube here. And that way there's no tension on the tube when I'm pulling, putting the tubes back together. If I just simply pulled this tube over here, the tube would naturally want to pull.
pull apart. And I'm using very, very fine sutures, and those sutures aren't strong enough to hold everything together. So I bring the tube close, and then once I've lined the tube up, then I go ahead and do my reanastomosis. Once I've done the reanastomosis, I inject dye again, fills up the uterus, and now at this point, I want to see the dye coming out of the entire tube like this rather than just coming out this way. And of course, I will check to make sure there is no leaking here. I want to make sure that there's no dye coming out of the tube where I've put it back together, the reanastomosis. The reanastomosis is a little more complicated than this. The tube is, is basically three different layers. You've got the lumen, and this is the area that's all the, uh, the little hairs that line the, the inside of this tube push the egg this way. And once it becomes an embryo, it pushes it back into the uterus. So this is where everything happens in the middle. There's this muscle layer here, and then there's a skin layer here. So I've actually got to put these three layers together. I, I first put the lumen together, the middle layer, and then once I've got that, that, that layer together, then I'll go ahead and put the muscle layer together. And then once I've got the muscle layer together, then I'll close the skin. So it's actually a, a three-layer closure. Uh, which is one of the reasons why we very rarely ever see leaking here at this point. Uh, so on her left, after I put the tube back together, I measured, she's seven centimeters, which is excellent. Uh, we like to see at least five centimeters, six centimeters or more is, is excellent. Seven centimeters on the right as well. Uh, and both sides had excellent flow. So she did very good. Yeah. Questions about anything or? No, no. Makes sense. Really good explanation. Okay, excellent. <laughs> All right, well, she'll uh, go ahead and take a picture of this, or, or you can just share with the video. Yeah, um, yeah. Afterwards, if she has any questions, make sure she gives me a call. Okay.